At this point, we recognize that the overlap of orbitals on adjacent atoms is key to covalent bond formation according to valence bond theory. But this quickly leads to some conceptual difficulties as we start thinking carefully about the shapes of the standard atomic orbitals, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, that we've already seen in earlier discussions of atomic electrons. We're going to resolve this difficulty in this video by introducing what are called the hybrid atomic orbitals, or often just abbreviated hybrids. The hybrids are a set of mathematically constructed atomic orbitals whose shapes are consistent with the molecular geometries we observe, like trigonal planar, tetrahedral, and so on. They're also conceptually very powerful because they give us insight into the relative energies of sigma bonding electrons. So hybridization is an invaluable tool for really digging deep and understanding on a deep level sigma bonding electrons. So in this video, we will see the foundations of hybridization and we'll move into learning how to identify the hybridization state of an atom and how we can apply hybridization. We'll also see what happens to unhybridized p orbitals that are left behind and account for pi bonding using these unhybridized p orbitals. So to introduce hybridization, I actually want to go back to our picture of the electron density of DDQ that we saw way back in an earlier discussion of what is a bonding theory. Now, the bond angles in DDQ are not consistent with the typical angles between orbitals on, for example, a carbon atom. If we look at the 2p orbitals on a carbon atom, they're aligned at 90 degrees to each other. But we see bond angles like 120 degrees at carbon atoms in DDQ. For example, right here, we've got a trigonal planar carbon atom. And so in order to use atomic orbitals and overlap atomic orbitals to depict bonds in this structure, we need atomic orbitals that are aligned in the trigonal planar directions, 120 degree bond angles. And simple atomic orbitals cannot do this. It's, this is why we need and how we use hybridization. What we'll call the set of sp2 hybrids is aligned at 120 degrees like this in a planar fashion. And so those atomic orbitals very intuitively and straightforwardly overlap with other hybrids, or for example, a 1s orbital of a hydrogen atom to produce covalent bonds under the valence bond picture. So hybrids are going to be highly useful for accounting for that electron density in a very conceptually efficient way, right? We could use the simple atomic orbitals and mix them together in complicated ways to explain bonding. Molecular orbital theory does just that, but for relatively simple standard Vesper geometries of sigma bonds, hybridization is an elegant and highly effective explanation and conceptual framework for thinking about those. So again here, just to reiterate the basic problem with using the simple atomic orbitals like 2s and 2p to depict covalent bonding, let's imagine a molecule like CH4, and I'm actually just going to show two of the four CH bonds in CH4, and think about how we might overlap atomic orbitals to depict the CH bonds to account for covalent bonding in this molecule. Each hydrogen brings a 1s orbital to the table, and that's spherical. So we can draw that there, and let's draw in the other 1s orbital. And we could imagine that each covalent bond, each CH covalent bond, involves the overlap of this 1s orbital with a 2p orbital on the carbon. So there's maybe a 2p orbital aligned along this direction, something like this, and maybe we could sort of arbitrarily call this the 2px. There's a p orbital at right angles to that one, that is aligned along this direction. Maybe we could call that maybe, for example, 2PY. And we've got these nice overlap regions where the covalent bond is sort of where the action is happening, right? Orbital overlap being key to covalent bond formation. The problem with this is that the implied bond angle here between the CH bonds is 90 degrees. But we know from Vesper theory and from direct experimental observation of the shape of a methane molecule that that bond angle is not 190 degrees. That bond angle is 109.5 degrees. And there are other molecules where the bond angles, for example, are 120 degrees in the trigonal planar geometry. And so we seemingly can't use the simple atomic orbitals to achieve these bond angles that we need of 109.5 and 120 degrees since the angle between p orbitals 
is 90 degrees. And if you think about the d orbitals, actually the similar issues apply. So the overlap of simple atomic orbitals, here simple meaning 2s, 2p, that kind of thing, can't fully describe bonding in most atoms. And this is particularly true when we're talking about organic molecules where tetrahedral and trigonal planar geometry are very much the norm. How do we get around this? Well, what we can do is mathematically create a set of atomic orbitals that's a mixture of S and P with the appropriate geometry that we observe within the molecule. And these mixtures of S and P orbitals are known as hybrid atomic orbitals. Now, important conceptual point here. Hybrid atomic orbitals are purely mathematical. There's no deep physical reality to these orbitals. They're nothing special in a physical sense. They're a mathematical construct aimed at sort of solving this optimization problem of aligning the orbitals along the bonding axes that we observe, you know, according to the electron density picture, for example. And so hybrid orbitals are entirely mathematical in nature. You don't want to give them too much credit. Right? They are mathematical constructs, but they are highly useful mathematical constructs for describing sigma bonding. When we talk about a mathematical mixture, what we really mean here is a linear combination or a weighted sum of atomic orbitals. And that weighted sum is carefully designed and really mathematically crafted, if you will, such that the hybrids have the energies and shapes that match the observed electron density distribution and, as a consequence, the observed molecular geometry, the Vesper geometries, for example, with those bond angles that are not equal to 90 degrees. We'll look at three different so-called hybridization states, and these depend on the number of sigma bonds that the atom in question needs to form. An atom that for needs to form two sigma bonds has sp hybridization, an atom that needs to form three sigma bonds has sp2 hybridization, and an atom that needs to form four sigma bonds has sp3 hybridization. And the basic idea in each of these cases is that we take an s orbital, let's start with that, we take one s orbital in each of these cases, and we mix in some number of p orbitals. And just for the purposes of illustration, I'll draw two orbitals that we're mixing in. So let's imagine we have this p orbital and then another one at right angles to this one and we're mixing all of these together with, which essentially means throwing them all into a big mathematical pot and assigning each a scaling coefficient so that the orbital we get out has the right size quote unquote based on the electron density distribution that we already know. So we throw these into our magical orbital mixing machine, and in, in this case where there are two p orbitals coming in, we'll get three total orbitals out, and they will be aligned along the directions of the trigonal planar geometry. So one will be here, for example, one will be here, and one will be here. And notice that if I overlay these, which I'm going to do now, I indeed get three atomic orbitals that point in the directions of the trigonal planar geometry. So there's a 120 degree bond angle, for example, between the lobes. And other than their spatial differences, other than this 120 degree bond angle difference, they're exactly the same. This set of three is known as the sp2 hybrid set, or sp2 hybridization. And what we're going to do now is take a deeper dive into examples of each of the three, three types of hybridization states and then round out this section by talking about how we can systematically assign hybridization state by analyzing the bonding pattern in a molecule and a couple of wrinkles associated with resonance and how we deal with resonance active electrons, electrons that are moved around to interconvert between resonance structures when we're thinking about hybridization. Before we get there though, I do want to make an important point about the shapes and energies of hybrid orbitals. The dimensionality and the energy of hybrid orbitals is based on their composition. And this is an important general idea that we'll see manifest in each of the specific cases on the following slide. Now, what do we mean by dimensionality? Well, notice, for example, in this case with sp2 hybridization, we ended up with a two-dimensional set of orbitals, a set of orbitals that exists within a plane, the trigonal plane. 
sp hybridization is associated with linear geometry and one dimensionality and sp3 hybridization is associated with a three-dimensional set of hybrid orbitals and the tetrahedral geometry which is if you think back to vesper theory the first three-dimensional geometry is the tetrahedral geometry and so as it turns out, and we'll dig into the details of this a little bit later, the number of p orbitals associated with the set of hybrids, the, the extent of p character is another way to talk about it, in the hybrid orbital dictates the dimensionality with 1p corresponding to one dimension, 2p's to two dimensions, and 3p's to three dimensions. The other point here that's made in the gray box is related to energy, and this is, I think, a, a somewhat more intuitive idea. The energy of a set of hybrid orbitals, and they're all at equivalent energy, as we'll see uh, within a set, the energies of those hybrids depend on the amount of p character in a way that's relatively straightforward. So we can imagine, for example, that in the atom as we know it, we've got, for example, a carbon atom, two p orbitals higher in energy than the 2s orbital. The hybrids are mathematical mixtures of the 2s and 2p orbitals. And the energies are likewise an average of the energies of the S and P orbitals. So, for example, an SP hybrid, or a set of two SP hybrids, has an energy that's halfway between the 2S and 2P orbital energies, because it's 50% S and 50% P. The SP2 hybrids, with a little more P character, are somewhat higher in energy because of their greater p character. They have more of that higher energy 2p orbital in their mixture, if you like. And the sp3 hybrids, having even more p character, are even higher in energy. And this trend in hybrid orbital energies has very real consequences. Bonds involving sp electrons tend to be shorter and stronger than bonds involving sp2 and sp3 electrons, other things being equal. And here we're, we're referring to sigma bonds specifically. And so this trend in the energies is important to keep in mind, and it's based on a relatively simple idea that if a hybrid is a mathematical mixture, a weighted average of the s and p orbital shapes, then the energy is also a weighted average of the energies of the s and p orbitals.